is a real estate sector where most people make their life's largest investment. But the problem with the real estate sector in India was that it was under-regulated or rather it was not properly regulated. Along with it, it, it provided only little protection to the buyers. Now to address these shortcomings and also to make the real estate sector more transparent as well as accountable came an act and that is called as the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act of 2016. Now we look into the details of this particular act. Now as an overview, this act aims to regulate the real estate sector and it came into effect completely on May 1st of 2017 and this act covers the residential as well as the commercial real estate. Now looking into the provisions of this particular act in detail, the first thing is that it aims to establish or it, it provides for the establishment of a real estate regulatory authority that is a single regulator. Now this, will, this authority will be established at the central as well as the state level. So you will have a real estate regulatory authority at the central as well as in each state. Now it also provides that those real estate projects where the planning area exceeds 500 square meters or in those, uh, or in those projects where the uh, number of apartments exceeds 8, those projects will have to mandatorily register with the real estate regulatory authority and along with this registration the authority also has certain other functions. Now what are those functions? First thing is that this authority will have to maintain a database of all these registered real estate projects and it will have to be put in the public domain so that the public can view it and have an understanding of the various real estate projects. And along with it, the real estate regulatory authority is also supposed to protect the interest of the buyers, the promoters and the intermediaries, that is the real estate agents. And it also is, uh, is provided with the function of looking into the grievances of, uh, that arises in this real estate sector. So these are the main functions of this real estate regulatory authority, that is maintain a database and putting it in the website and also looking into the interest of both the promoter, the buyer as well as the intermediaries and also looking into the grievances. Now the registration I have already mentioned, it will have to be registered with the real estate regulatory authority failing which uh, a fine of about 10% uh, of, the, of the respective project or uh, an imprisonment of 3 years is also being provided and the real estate agents will also have to register with this particular authority. And there is a fast track dispute resolution mechanism. So earlier what happened is that there is the, the grievances in that arise in this real estate sector was taken up to the consumer courts. Now instead of that, it will be taken up by the real estate regulatory authority. And if suppose the person is not satisfied with the verdict of this particular real estate regulatory authority, they can go for an appeal and that to the real estate appellate tribunal and the tribunal will have to adjudicate this particular appeal within a time span of 60 days. So that time limit is also being given. Now along with it, there is a compulsory, de a, a provision is there wherein a compulsory deposit of 70% of the fund that is being collected from the buyers will be, will have to be kept in an escrow account where it will be, that is in any scheduled bank and this particular deposit will have to be exclusively used for the construction of the project, of that particular project. Okay, so this separate or this compulsory deposit will have to be used exclusively for the construction of that particular project. So these are the main, so it provides for the setting up of a real estate regulatory authority at the central as well as the state level and then it also provides for the registration of the real estate projects as well as the real estate agents with the authority and then the fast track dispute settlement mechanism and also the provision for an appellate tribunal and also the compulsory deposition of the 70% of the fund and that will be exclusively used for the construction of, the, of that particular project. Now it also puts in certain functions as well as duties on the promoter. Now what all are those functions as well as duties? The first thing is that there is a need to disclose all the relevant information of a particular project. That is there is a mandatory public disclosure that is required of a particular project and the promoter will have to adhere to the approved plans and the project specifications. So in this case, if suppose the promoter has to deviate from the approved plans as well as project specifications, the promoter will have to get the consent of at least two-third of the allottees to whom the apartment will be allotted. So that adherence has to be followed. And then there is also obligation regarding the veracity of the advertisements for the sale as well as prospectus. 
that is along with it they'll have to ensure the uh, ensure or they have the obligations on the verification of the advertisements and also they can they can put in the advertisements only after they register uh, uh, that particular project with the regulatory authority so that mandatory registration and then only the advertisements can be put on the act also puts in an obligation on the promoter to rectify the structural defects now if suppose a particular structural defect is visible within the 5 years after the handing out of the possession to a particular allottee or the buyer if suppose a defect is visible then the promoter will have to rectify this particular defect within 30 days without charging any cost so that is within 5 years any structural defect visible the promoter will have to rectify it without charging any cost so that is in regard to the obligation for rectifying the structural defects and also they will have to refund the money in cases of default so these are the main functions as well as duties from the side of the promoter but the act also provides certain rights as well as duties on the allottees also that is the allottees will will have the right to obtain the stage wise time schedule of the project they will be updated about the project and then they can claim the possession as per the promoter declare, uh, declaration and then they will have the refund with the interest as well as the compensation for default by the promoter so they will have this compensation and then the allottees will have to make the payments as well as fulfill the responsibilities as per the agreement so in here what the provision has made is that in case of the default either by the promoter or by the allottee the interest or the or the uh, charge the interest that will be charged will be the same so that has resolved the unequal relation that was happening between the promoter as well as the buyer so that is in regard to the rights as well as duties of the allottees so we have the authority coming in providing certain rights as well as duties on to the promoter as well as on to the allottees so we look into what are the benefits of this particular rera act the first thing is that i've already said the regulation was not happening properly and instead with this act there is a single regulator that is going to come about and then it, it brings in the in common platform all the entities that is be it the uh, promoters or the allottees or the buyers or the intermediaries they are all brought in to a common platform and then it promotes a transparency i've already mentioned the pub, the mandatory public disclosure that is required for the for each and every real estate projects that aims at ensuring the transparency another benefit that has been cited is in regard to ensuring the accountability so in the real estate sector if suppose a promoter fails to complete a particular project that is within the agreed timeline then from now onwards and as per the act they'll have to compensate to the buyers for this particular delay and if suppose any any uh, any deviation from a particular approved plan or specification is needed then the promoter will now have to seek the consent of at least two third of the allottees and if suppose the promoters compromise on the quality of the real estate projects and if suppose the structural defects appear then they'll have to rectify these defects within the 30 days and that too without charging the cost so in these ways it has been able to ensure the accountability in the sector and then another benefit is that with the provision that keeps aside 70% of the project fund in a separate account and that should be used exclusively for the construction project now this is to address a particular tendency wherein the developers used to collect the funds for a particular project but they used to divert these funds for another or for purchasing another project so what happens is that those funds have been diverted and used for another project so the chances of this project the for which the buyers did pay will be delayed and the other uh, the other project will also be delayed in the similar way so to address this kind of tendency the 70% fund has has now been supposed to be kept aside and that will be exclusively used for the construction purpose and next is in regard to the dispute resolution mechanism so before this act came in earlier the disputes were being settled by the consumer courts and that was not functioning in an efficient manner in regard to the grievances in the sector so now we have the rera and the appellate tribunal also having the timeline so that can ensure a better dispute resolution mechanism and also it in when you analyze all these provisions you can say that it it in a holistic manner boosts the confidence of the home buyers so these are the main benefits that has been cited in regard to the regulation act that is real estate regulation act 
that is the single regulator coming in bringing in a common platform or that is the buyers the promoters as well as the intermediaries then promoting the transparency ensuring the accountability 70 percent funds will have to be kept aside and the dispute resolution mechanism that is exclusively to look into the real estate sector and boosting the confidence of the home buyers but there has been criticism also in regard to the act concerns first thing is in regard to the law itself now i've already mentioned that the law came into effect on that is a real estate regulation as well as development act came into effect on may 1st of 2017 but when you look into the different states only few states had enacted this particular real estate regulation act in their own states and that too when you analyze or when you look into the provisions you can see that it has been much diluted from the original version that was put forward by the center so that is the first thing that is a difference between the central as well as the state law that's the first thing second thing is that another concern is the wide definition of this term promoter now it will be including the developer the investors and uh, who are actively participating in this particular project so this can reduce or this can affect the investments into this particular real estate sector so that is the next thing that is a wide definition of the promoter and then about setting aside 70 percent of the funds suppose uh, suppose you imagine a situation where in a in a particular project if the construction cost is less than 70 percent and the cost of the land is more than 30 percent so that situation can also arise now that is another concern and then the time limit for adjudication in terms of the consumer courts it also had the timeline of about 90 days but that didn't function properly but in this case about 60 days time limit so we'll have to look into how this will be properly implemented now that is so this timeline is another concern and then another very important thing is that the provision as for the provision it penalizes the promoters in case of the delay if they delay in the pro in the uh, project completion but you cannot always uh, you know criticize the developers for the delay if suppose you take a pr particular project it will be it will require the clearances from the central state as well as the local levels now suppose imagine a situation where the file gets stuck in a particular department that can have an influence or it can delay the real estate project but who will be ho hold responsible for the delayed completion of a project it will be the pro or it will be the developer or the promoter so we need to consider such kind of situations where the clearance is the, the the delay happens because of the clearances or because of the lack of coordination in the government functioning so that is the next concern that has been raised another concern is in regard to the issue that came up during the implementation of the real estate regulation act now i've already mentioned the act came into effect on may 1st of 2017 but after the act came into effect the center came up with an order in which it debarred the real estate developers from marketing the ongoing projects that were not yet registered with the rera in the respective states but when you look into the why exactly the delay was there in the registration it was because the states had failed to, to establish the real estate regulatory authority and that is the reason why the delay happened from the part of the developers now coming up with such kind of orders in in a in a situation that is when you when you look into the construction sector it is one of the key drivers of the economic growth and it has already got hit because of the demonetization and uh, but the various studies indicate that the potential home buyers are bound to increase when you when you look into these facts coming up with this particular reason and because and just because the fault is with the states the the developers will have to suffer so these concerns will also have to be taken up during the implementation so the main concerns that has been raised is the difference between the central as well as state laws the wide definition of the term promoter and then setting aside the 70 percent funds time limit for the adjudication monetarily penalizing the promoter for the delay in the project completion and then the sender coming up with an order of debarring the developers who have not registered and what is the way forward the first thing is of course urging the states to establish the regulatory bodies and also developing the website also that is essential then only that transparency can come in and then along with it we need to ensure the transparency in the government clearances also that is essential only then the timeline or the uh, timeline of the promoters can be ensured so another suggestion that can be cited is that RBI must ease up on the risk weightage for the loans to the real estate developers. 
Now with this Real Estate Regulation Act, it has ensured uh, a better or a better regulation and ensuring the transparency as well as accountability. So in such conditions, the RBI need to look into the risk weightage of the loans that go to the real estate sector. So that is another suggestion. And then the other, other uh, reforms like that of easing the supply of the land by changing the conversion of the norms have to be needed so that the real estate sector is boosted. And then the government also should consider dismantling the regressive building regulations in the cities. So these are the main suggestions that if, if implemented that can help in a better regulation of the real estate sector. That is urging the states to establish their respective regulatory bodies and also the websites and then the transparency in the clearances, especially the government clearances and then the RBI must consider to look into the risk weightage of the loans that go to the real estate sector and then easing the supply of the land and also dismantling the regressive building regulations. So these are the various suggestions that can be cited. So these are the things in regard to the Real Estate Regulation Act that was passed in 2016.